Hello, I'm Barney Kessel, and welcome to my jazz guitar improvisational course. I'm going to be explaining and showing you many techniques that are going to help you to become a better jazz improviser. Before we start, you should know that I expect you to have played at least one year, that you have had time to develop calluses on your fingers and strengthen your hand, and that you have studied some basic music theory. It will help a lot in this course to have that kind of a background. And now before we begin, I'd like to give you an A440 pitch so that you can tune your guitar to mine because we will be playing together during this course. And now we're ready to begin lesson number one. I'd like to discuss a very important thing, and that is how to develop the ability to play what you think. This is something that every great improviser has. If you can't play what you think, then you're reduced to playing formulas and licks and devices and patterns that you see on the fingerboard. And this is very mechanical and very plastic and it has no energy, has no spontaneous feelings, no, no creativity. So it's very important that you develop the ability to play what you hear. And there's two steps involved. One is to develop the ability to play what you hear, and the second is be sure that what you hear is worth playing. Because just because you can play what you hear doesn't mean that it has any real musical value. So those are two things to keep in mind. Now, the technique that I wish to tell you about right now is to think about striking a chord on the guitar without intellectualizing it, without naming the notes, without naming the name of the chord, just play a chord and savor the harmonic sound of the chord, very much as though you were in a kitchen and you're smelling something that is just very delicious and it smells great, it's just going to be a great meal and you just take in this aroma and experience it without analyzing what it is. So you play a chord and you listen to it, you listen to the tonality and let something in your mind, in your imagination well up that is a statement, a musical line that you wish to hear in your mind that is somewhere between six to nine notes in length. And the reason I say six to nine notes is, in my estimation, if it's less than six notes, it's not challenging enough for you. And if it's more than about nine notes, then it's something that if you were not to find it immediately on the guitar, you might get lost because you wouldn't remember a very long line. So somewhere in there is a, is a pretty good amount of notes. So you imagine this line of music. Try to make it something in your mind that you create that is not a scale and is not an arpeggio, but it is very much a melody. That is, it has a rise and a fall, as, as good melodies do. It's something that you could sing and get great satisfaction from singing this melody. It's something that you could add words to. It's melodic rather than just a scale or exercise or etude. So we strike a chord and we imagine in our mind something. First thing is we imagine it in our mind and then we, after internalizing it or hearing it in our thoughts or in our mind, we then externalize it by either humming or singing or whistling it. And I give you all three choices because many people say, well, I can't sing, so then hum, or I can't hum, then whistle. But in some way, you externalize this thought you had. Now, when you've externalized it, you have stated this both within yourself and outside two times, and now you're ready to find it on the guitar. Try to find it somewhere near the nut of the guitar, somewhere in the first position of the guitar. And as you gain familiarity with finding more and more lines in the lower positions of the guitar, then try to find them in higher positions, in the same key, and then moving to other keys. But you try to later to find as many different positions on the guitar to play that same little melody that you made up. 
So I'm going to do one for you right now. I'm going to play a chord. I'm not thinking of what the chord is, the name of the chord, the notes in the chord. I'm just going to savor the chord and let something come to my mind that I think would fit, that would be in agreement with this chord. And hopefully it is a melody rather than an exercise. Now I hear it in my mind. I'm going to externalize it by whistling it. Now I'm going to do another one. I'm going to find one that's a little more challenging, a little more uh, difficult to hear. I'm going to try to find it in a lower position. Now, sometimes you will notice I'm closing my eyes. When you close your eyes, you can hear much better. You can also hear your thoughts better. You can hear what's in your mind better when you close your eyes. And you can also hear music better when you close your eyes. So sometimes this helps. Keep that in mind. Now, as I played this, I tried to Find it on the guitar. If you do not find every note right away, don't get discouraged. Don't go back to playing these licks. Don't go back to playing the formulas and these uh, patterns that you see on the fingerboard. But remember, the only way to get good at making up something is to make it up and keep making it up and not get discouraged. And if you make a little mistake, so what? You do it over again and each time you'll get closer. And finally, you'll reach a point where it almost seems as though it's simultaneous, although it's just a very short time span between you thinking about it and being able to play it. I'm going to try to think of something, whistle it, and play it at the same time. Now, it's not exactly the same time, but it's so fast that it almost seems as though it were the same time. That's the idea. And when you get to that point, you will have really mastered the first step that's necessary in becoming a jazz improviser. Now, I'm going to play several chords for you, and I want you to listen to the chord, hear a melody anywhere from six to nine notes in length in your mind, and then I want you to externalize it by whistling, singing, or humming it and then finally find it on the guitar in a low position somewhere. And as you become more proficient, do more of these exercises. Try to find more places on the fingerboard to play the same melody that you created and find other keys. Here's the first chord. I'll play that again. Here's the second chord. And here is the third chord. <laughs> 